Right, so we're switching topics now to football right here on the Sports Max Zone. Backlash has continued to follow Argentina and Chelsea midfielder Endo Fernandez following his controversial Instagram Live after Argentina won the Copa America last Sunday. The Instagram Live hosted by Fernandez himself showed members of the Argentina team singing a song that had lyrics singling out and mocking members of the French national team of African heritage. The French Football Federation has since announced that they would be filing a legal complaint for what they deem racist and discriminatory remarks. On the other hand, Argentina Vice President Victoria Villaruel made this statement about the situation. Speaking on Enzo Fernandez. No colonialist country is going to intimidate us for a song that is sung on the pitch or for telling the truths that they do not want to admit. Stop feigning indignation, hypocrites. Enzo, I support you. Messi, thank you for everything. Argentines always with their heads held high. Long live Argentina. Fernandez has since took to social media to post an apology. This is what he said. I want to apologize sincerely for a video posted on my Instagram channel during the national team celebrations. The song includes highly offensive language and there is absolutely no excuse for these words. I stand against discrimination in all forms and apologize for getting caught up in the euphoria of our Copa America celebrations. That video, that moment, those words, do not reflect my beliefs or my character. I'm truly sorry. Well, several French players, including Chelsea defender Wesley Fofana, condemned Fernandez following the incident. All right. Well, we have so much to unpack here. So we have enlisted our football analyst, Brent Sancho, to help us do just that. Brent, good afternoon. How are you doing? Good afternoon, Ray. I'm great, thank you very much. Uh, it's Friday afternoon here in Trinidad Tobago, so I'm a happy man. Yeah, I can only imagine. <laughs> you know, whenever we have topics like this to discuss, Brent, it always affects me in a different type of way because I feel like right now we live in a society where information is easily accessible. And I feel as if, you know, anybody from even a young kid has access to devices. Um, it's not like long time where you have to go into a library and read a book and then you can find out what's happening at the end of the book. Information is constantly in our faces, different forms, different formats, you know. So for this to happen and for us to be talking about this, it really, really breaks my heart. What about you? How do you feel after this Argentina win? The fact that we're here, Brent, on a Friday afternoon discussing a topic that I really wish would just go away. Yeah, I think what you just said at the end, it's uh, what most people involved in sports, not just football, wish that it can go away. Uh, it's a topic that is a recurring theme. I, I know for myself, for being part of the Sports Max family for quite some time, I feel like I come maybe once every six months and have this discussion about racism. Uh, and it, it points back to all the things that we probably would have said many, many years ago. Uh, this is something that is, uh, you know, racism is a learned behavior. It's, you don't, you're not born a racist. And, and uh, I'm not going to sit here on this program and talk about Argentina's history when it comes to, to that sort of thing. But what, I, what, I'm, what I'm really angry about with this particular situation is that it's a player. And, and I just feel that, and, and as you rightfully pointed to, that players have a higher obligation, higher standards to uplift. When you are a superstar, it's the reason why you're paid so much money because whether you like it or not, you are a role model for, for society. And to see players, how foolish can you be? Players singing on a bus, a racist, uh, racist uh, tones, undertones, it's just, it, it, it baffles me, especially on, on, on a social media platform. You must know what the ramifications are, what, what, what will happen uh, when, when something like this happened. It's astonishing. And, and I'm not suggesting by any stretch of the man, imagination that I'm condoning behavior uh, of racism or racism behavior outside of players. But I just think, Mariah, that players should be holding themselves to higher accountable levels. And that certainly wasn't the case with the Argentina team, who we should be lauding 
and of course talking about because of what they've been able to do this summer instead this is a topic yeah and brent if the players doing this was bad then what about the um, graphic I just read out for you, the statement from the vice president, um, Argentina vice president, Victoria? What about that comment now? Listen, and all due respect to, to Argentinians, I know a lot of Argentinians, and, and they would very quickly dispel the fact that, uh, that they are racist society. But again, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Because the proof is in the pudding. You, you look at what has transpired in that country. You look at the behavioral patterns. You, you hear stories. And, and Mariah, let, let me just tell our viewers. This is not new. This is not racial behavior. And our racial behavior and racism in Argentina is not new. It has happened in games when they play in, it, in the Copa Libertadores, in other games when it comes to, of course, uh, the, South Amer the, the, the Copa America. And this chant that uh, we are talking about, this song that, this, that was sung by... Of course, Enzo Fernandez and his teammates. This came after the Qatar World Cup when they played against France, of course. So this is not something that is new. They've practiced this. So when a, a VP comes out with her irresponsible self and makes such a statement and douses more gasoline into such a situation, it tells you how tone deaf, how, how embedded, how systemic that this issue is. So when we are trying to talk about, of course, this player and possibly what the punishment should be, what should happen... It's bigger than that. And, and again, it always comes back to the fact that, yes, we talk about racism in sports, but how much bigger in it than, it, than, than sports it is? Because here is a VP coming out and making such a reckless statement yeah. uh, about a situation that she should be condemning. And it's, it's a tragedy. And, and, and there's nothing that anyone can say to me uh, that will help this or help me feel better about it, because I know six months down the line we're going to be talking about it again. Yeah, reckless indeed. And Brent, you heard the apology from Enzo. Was it sincere? Do you feel as if, you know, he learned his lesson and this would not be repeated by him and it would also set an example for other Argentinians to follow? Well, only he would know if it's sincere, really, isn't it? He, he And uh, when you look at the statement, uh, from my humble opinion, it, it just looks like someone has, that was caught. My question, Mariah, if he wasn't caught, would he be right? Of course he wouldn't be right in this if he wasn't caught. He probably would have sung all the way through and co continued to sing it, and they probably did do that. Uh, so statements mean nothing to me. It's about changing the way you behave uh, moving forward. I think the big question, of course, we are going to probably get into that side of the conversation for Enzo, uh, is how does he now integrate back into a locker room? How does the, the players that were part of it integrate back into a locker room uh, where we know football is a, is a, is a, a team sport? How does that relationship work? How does all of that unfold and unpack itself? Because as far as I'm concerned, I've seen so many statements from players over the years, from FAs, from different people, from, from the, the, the governing body of the sport. But what is it really? It's just statements, isn't it? There's, there's no real action behind it. And what I'm looking for is action. Right. So you say statement means nothing. But there's been a big thing about um, Lionel Messi's non-statement. He hasn't said anything. So, Brent, what do we make of that now? Because now people want to hear from Messi about this situation. Yeah, there's always been uh, question marks when it comes to Lionel Messi and, and the way he can. He's, he's not a vocal person, but that does not excuse him for a situation like this. He is a global superstar. And at the end of the day, he has to say something it, it, because this is a, a, this is bigger than football. This is an opportunity for him to condemn his teammates, to condemn that sort of behavior and put the record straight. Uh, but he hasn't done that. And I'm not surprised, Mara, because uh, and I'm not suggesting for any stretch of the imagination that Lionel Messi is racist, but he comes from a culture where this is acceptable, this sort of behavior is acceptable. Uh, so maybe in his mind, he, he doesn't want to make a statement because he doesn't see anything wrong with it. But the longer he continues to be silent about it, wrongfully, uh, it's those question marks will start to pop up. And I think he has to do something about it. Yeah, and you know, you just mentioned something important uh, there, Brent, because his integration into the Chelsea setup now is going to be a problem. We heard that some of his teammates at Chelsea have now unfollowed him on, on their social media platforms, which isn't good heading into a new season. So this is a real problem here. Now, Victoria Villarreal's comments, as Mariah just said, are shocking, in my opinion. I, for her to say no colonialist country is going to intimidate us for a football song, You've hit the nail on the head, um, 
Brent, when you say she's she's tone deaf, she's she's missing the issue here. This is not an issue of colonialists, um, you know, trying to to you know overpower um, a situation, and the fact that Enzo has apologized is is it's showing itself that Enzo realized that he has done something that's wrong and that has offended people. So for her to come out and make these statements now as if, you know, <laughs> she'll defend him all the way, it, I, it, it, it's stunning. You know, I, I, maybe I was watching the Dominicans but, and dominate England today, so I didn't see that story. <laughs> I saw it for the first time when Mariah just read it, and I was in, I, I was in awe. I, I can't believe that the vice president of a country could behave so stupidly. Well, well, it gets worse. There was a member of a party that have tried to condone the behavior, Lance, and that person was fired for doing such. So it tells you how ingrained and embedded this sort of behavior is. And the conversation coming out of Argentina, from all reports that I've been reading, is that this is football banter. How could racism be football banter? Again, many Argentinians, of course, that I know personally, would quickly suggest that this does not of course, uh, uh, show the type of nation that they are. Mm. But again, Lance, I keep saying the proof is in the pudding. As you rightfully said, here is a VP, someone in, in such a position, as tone deaf as they are, coming up with such a statement. It is ludicrous what is happening. And then, of course, now Enzo Fernandez and some of his teammates, because not just about Enzo Fernandez going back into the Chelsea locker room, mm. what about his other teammates that were part of it and, and singing? So it's, it's several locker rooms that will be impacted by this sort of situation. Yeah. And the longer this thing goes on, you just you just wonder, because what are we going to do about it? That's that's the question I want to know, because, of course, I'm hearing that FIFA is filing investigations, et cetera, et cetera. But Lance, Mariah, how many times we've heard that? How many times we've heard investigations? How many times we've heard those sorts of words? Yeah, and, and uh, an official, I'm told, was, was fired because he requested that Messi should, should apologize. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, that's that's exactly what what transpired. Uh, that obviously that Messi should come on, and he should. Yes. I mean, I know a lot of us around the world are Messi fans. I'm a fan of Messi as well. But right is right, and 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 this is a situation as a leader. I said football players, sporting personalities, no matter they like it or not, you have a responsibility to be that person, to be a leader, to be a to be a figure, uh, and that's why you're paid all that money because you are supposed to be a figure in this world that, that projects the right things. And Lionel Messi is one of the marquee figures of football. There is absolutely no way he can sit back and stay quiet and hope this blows over, because I feel something like this can have some sort of, 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 of little bit of a tinge on his legacy as a footballer, because at the end of the day, Part of being a great footballer is also being a great person off the pitch. Yeah, and you know what, Brent? And uh, I, I like Messi just as much as you do. But when you hear a situation like this and the narrative coming from you, it just emphasizes to me that the great Muhammad Ali is the greatest sports hero of all time, undisputed. Yeah, I have to fully agree with that because you have a responsibility to, to stand up for social issues because you have a voice, you have an image, you have you have a, a persona that's bigger out there and people listen to you. This situation, and again, I've heard all throughout the last couple of, of days about this situation that it's it's the way Argentinians are. It's not. This is a learned behavior. The same way you learn it, you can unlearn it. And it's the reason why Enzo Fernandez very much will not sing that song in a Chelsea locker room because he'd probably get his lights punched out of him because he you knows it's not the right thing to do. So here he is back in his bus in his own environment, and the first thing he wants to do is sing a song like that. That tells me a lot about the individual. Mm. Well, this is a, a terrible story, but Brent, unfortunately, you're correct. In another five or six months, we'll be on the zone discussing another issue like this, and it just seems as if it's a, a, a never-ending issue. And um, as you correctly pointed out, it, it is not a sports issue. It is far bigger than sport because we hear the vice president of Argentina standing up for this foolishness. So this transcends sport. It is, it is, it is an issue that is far bigger than sport. It, it shows itself up in sport from time to time. But the issue of racism goes far deeper than, than we see on the sporting, on the sporting platforms. And I, 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 I don't think it will ever end, but there has to be 
a level of maturity in this global world that we're living in now, uh, Brent, where people begin to recognize that there are right and wrong ways to do things. And I, I can't, I, I don't think you can change someone if they are at heart a racist, but they have to understand that the behavioral pattern when, when they, when they uh, pronounce themselves and, and publicly display these things, they have to find a way to curtail that because it's unacceptable. Well, well, I'll make two quick points, Lars. First, I, I, obviously, I'll mention that, that, that what happened in the last FIFA Congress uh, in Bangkok recently, I think it was about two months ago, uh, and racism did come to the... Well, how to tackle racism came to the forefront, uh, and it was uh, uh, laid out that a five-pillar plan would come out. Two of those pillars out of the five spoke to, uh, of course, criminal uh, charges, uh, and the second one talked about FAs in, in, in of course, putting out uh, maybe forfeiting games, et cetera, when it comes to those sorts of things. So we talk about FIFA trying to, to put things forward, uh, to try to, to attack uh, the, the racism issue that they have. But going back a little bit to what you just mentioned, you can be racist in your house, that's fine. But once you leave your house, you are expected to behave a certain way in society. And that's the point. Uh, yes, it's, a, it's, a, it's an issue. You can have uh, all the bad traits that you want, keep it in your house. Don't bring it out in public. Don't bring it outside. Don't behave that way. Because you're expected to, to, to behave a particular way when you're in society. Yeah. And yeah. the way Enzo and the rest of them behave, that is not acceptable. It, it doesn't matter what anyone tells me, it just isn't. Yeah, and I always say, with every bit of power comes a lot of responsibility, Brent. As always, we thank you so much for joining us on the Sports Max Zone. Have a good weekend, a happy, happy Friday, and we'll talk again really soon. All right, guys, have a great one. Yeah. All right, Brent Sancho there, of course, former TNT footballer, former Minister of Sport, now Sports Max Zone analyst, and I could go on and on, but we really have to take a break, so let's do that.